Do we have proof that we're the only intelligent life in the galaxy? Even the brilliant Enrico Fermi subscribed to this idea. What if he turns out to be correct? Several people have thought deeply about this. They start by remarking on how persuasive the Fermi paradox actually is. Whether alien spaceships travel at 1% light speed or 10% light speed is up for debate. It makes no difference. You can debate how many years it would require a brand new star colony to produce its own colonies. This makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. Every plausible estimate of the speed at which colonization could occur still yields timeframes vastly shorter than that of the age of the galaxy. It's comparable to debating whether Spanish ships could go at 2 or 20 knots in the 16th century. They could be able to populate the Americas quickly anyway. As a result, scientists inside and outside the SETI group have devised alternative reasons to reconcile the paradox of the absence of alien presence. Several articles from the 1980s explore potential technical and social reasons for the alien's absence. If you find this video entertaining, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. You can also share your comments below. Where are all the aliens? This is the question at the heart of the Fermi Paradox. How come no one has come to see or communicate with us if life is so plentiful? An offhand comment made by the famous physicist Enrico Fermi during lunch in 1950 has fascinated and intrigued SETI scientists ever since. Fermi made this statement while thinking aloud to his mealtime companions about the likely existence of many technologically advanced civilizations throughout the galaxy. Fermi's flexible thinking, however, grasped that if this were true, it meant something profound. Some alien societies may have spread out if there were many alien civilizations. Fermi realized that any culture could quickly populate the entire galaxy with a modest bit of rocketry and an immoderate amount of imperial incentive. As little as tens of millions of years from now, the Empire could have complete control over every star system in the galaxy. Although tens of millions of years may seem like a long period for a project, it's fairly short compared to the age of the galaxy, which is around a thousand times longer. Hence, as Fermi saw it, the extraterrestrials had plenty of time to spread across the galaxy. Yet we need help finding evidence that they're wandering around here. None of the hallmarks of a galactic empire or the United Planets Federation has presented themselves to us. After realizing this, Fermi asked the obvious question, where is everybody? If so much of the cosmos is populated by intelligent life, then where are they? We call this incoherence the Fermi Paradox. Unfortunately, Fermi did not have much time to reflect on this problem, as he passed away only four years later in 1954. With that in mind, according to NASA, above 4,000 exoplanets have been discovered in the previous two decades, and our galaxy likely contains trillions of stars, many of which harbor their own planets. Given that life emerged on Earth, wouldn't we also anticipate it to have emerged somewhere else in the cosmos, sometime during the past 14 billion years? they are too far away to make contact with them. Even though science fiction has conditioned us to expect interstellar travel and meetings with people from vastly diverse origins, a severe limitation is imposed by reality. Even transmissions can't travel quicker than light. Our galaxy has a diameter of over 150,000 light years. With only a century and a half of radio transmissions under our belts, we are only detectable within a 100 light year radius of Earth. The Planetary Society created an image that puts the immensity of the Milky Way in perspective, demonstrating how ridiculous the present expansion of our communication is. As the speed of light is constant across the universe, the same restriction applies to the prospect of receiving messages from other civilizations. According to a study published in 2016, just 1% of the galaxy may have been reached by radio communications from other planets. We still have to wait around 1500 years to have a good chance of being contacted by some alien broadcast. These results were based on introducing certain estimated assumptions on the distribution of the galaxy's stars and the likely frequency of the presence of life into a model. 
The zoo hypothesis states that we are being watched without our knowledge. Years before Fermi himself, the father of space exploration, Konstantin Selkovsky, spoke about the Fermi paradox in his manuscripts. He stated in 1933 that intelligent alien beings who are immensely more sophisticated than us would be just as interested in speaking with us as we'd be interested in speaking with snakes, wolves, or gorillas. John Ball, a radio astronomer, concluded 40 years later that aliens had placed us alone in a part of a nature reserve or zoo. In 1977, Mark Morris and Thomas Kuiper looked into the so-called zoo hypothesis, which holds that other intelligent beings watch us without revealing themselves to us, treating us like wildlife in a national park. They claimed that aliens preserve us in isolation until we have something useful to offer. Several scientists' theoretical reflections are still centered around these concepts. However, the deliberate isolation decided by every other civilization would demand synchronization among the inhabitants of the so-called Galactic Club, which is most likely impossible in our galaxy when taken to the domain of simulations. Before any more arise, we'll be extinct. The assumption that many intelligent life forms exist in our galaxy was already well established until radio astronomer Francis Drake gave it algebraic form in 1961. Several scientists have re-examined the Drake equation, which attempts to estimate the number of civilizations, concluding that these other species must be many. Even with this optimistic point of view, some scientists have pointed out that calculations like the Drake equation don't account for the reality that civilizations are born and die, and that the two do not necessarily overlap in time throughout the universe's life. The unfortunate thing is that 92% of planets like ours still need to form in the universe's history, according to two Space Telescope Science Institute scientists who calculated the likelihood of other civilizations in the cosmos in 2015. The assumption is that because humans have evolved too quickly, they won't likely be there when new intelligent beings do. And if the spread of civilization tends to wipe out others unwittingly, then our arrival might make it so no one else ever gets the chance to exist. Maybe the aliens fear the cost of interstellar traveling. The fact that interstellar travel is too expensive is one factor. Think about, for instance, launching a little rocket toward Proxima Centauri, not the matchbook-sized craft that the Breakthrough Snapshot team had in mind, but a spacecraft that could hold a crew and all the supplies they would need to survive in space. The Mayflower size, perhaps. You'll need roughly 100 billion joules of energy to transport this small interstellar arc to our nearest star neighbor in 50 years. On Earth, the going pricing for energy is 10 cents per kilowatt hour, while we are unsure what aliens pay. Hence, each pilgrim would incur a $40 billion transportation cost. That's a lot of money, far more than would be required to provide each immigrant with a few thousand six-bedroom palaces and a comfortable existence. Any alien species would be discouraged from attempting to colonize distant lands simply because the journey would be expensive, regardless of the currency. The extraterrestrials might live happily at home for much less money. The finest locations in our solar system to look for extraterrestrial life. We now understand that life may persist in conditions previously thought impossible, including extreme cold and dryness, extreme depths under pressures, previously thought impossible, and the absence of direct sunlight as an energy source. But even our limited knowledge of these uncharted territories has grown substantially. Venus and Mars, two of our rocky neighbors, were once temperate and Earth-like worlds, and some of the life persisted even after the planet's temperatures changed for the worst. There may be habitable subsurface waters on a number of ice moons that orbit Jupiter and Saturn. Even a few can have an atmosphere, and yet more areas that appear too far flung for real life keep surprising us. The following are the ideal areas in our solar system to look for life, even if it is unlikely to be something other than intelligent. Triton The largest of Neptune's moons, Triton, is also one of the solar system's most unique worlds. Because of its live geysers that spray sublimated nitrogen gas, it makes up the only five moons in our solar system confirmed to be geologically active. It has a crust consisting of water ice, a mantle of ice, and a surface primarily comprised of frozen nitrogen. Yeah, the planet is really chilly. 
Despite this, it appears to experience some heat from gravitational tension between Neptune and Triton, which may assist in warming the oceans and create the conditions for life to develop on the Moon through any organic material that may be present there. Nonetheless, the likelihood of discovering life on Triton appears quite remote. Voyager 2 was the only expedition to ever travel to the world. Once every 13 years, a window for this kind of mission opens. Europa The moon of Jupiter is covered by an icy crust 10 to 15 miles thick, beneath which lies a massive ocean warmed by tidal forces. It is hypothesized that this heating contributes to forming an interior circulation system that continually replenishes the frozen surface. So the ocean floor communicates with the surface. The diving into the ocean's depths may not be necessary to find out if life lives there. Clay-like materials associated with biological compounds have been discovered in deposits on Europa. It's also possible that oxygen produced when radiation hits the frozen surface will eventually reach the deep waters, which can be utilized by newly forming life. Potentially, everything needed for life is present. Titan Titan, the largest of Saturn's moons, is another unique world in the solar system. Outside of Earth and Venus, it possesses one of the strongest atmospheres for a solid world in our solar system. Many lakes, rivers, and oceans populate the area, yet they are not constructed from H2O, but rather a variety of hydrocarbons and methane. Titan already has abundant basic ingredients for life due to its abundance of organic molecules. Moreover, it may have an ocean of water beneath its surface, though this must be confirmed. NASA's Dragonfly mission is just what scientists need to better understand how advanced Titan's prebiotic chemistry is. It will deploy a drone helicopter into Titan's atmosphere to investigate the gas directly. The launch of that mission is scheduled for 2027, and it is expected to reach Titan in 2034. Mars the existence of lakes and rivers on the surface of Mars indicates that it was once livable billions of years ago. The atmosphere was thick enough to keep things comfortable and warm back then. What relevance does this have for finding current life? If life had existed in the past on Mars, then it is conceivable for life to exist there today, maybe underneath Earth, but certainly not on the surface. Radar observations have been employed in a few large-scale investigations, and the results suggest that underground aquifers may exist, storing water. Similar bacteria have been discovered on Earth, so it is not out of the question that life could exist in certain regions of Mars. Getting down there will be quite challenging, but if we think something is hiding in those reservoirs, we should all work together to figure out a way to get there and check it out. Ceres the smallest dwarf planet and the biggest asteroid in the solar system both have the potential to have liquid water deep within. In orbit from 2015 to 2018, NASA's Dawn spacecraft explored Ceres, a minor planet located between Mars and Jupiter. Intriguing research in the last few years reveals an ocean 25 miles beneath the surface that could spread for hundreds of miles. Scientists are now unpacking and evaluating that data. The high salt concentration in the water would prevent it from freezing at temperatures well below zero. Dawn also discovered chemical molecules on Ceres, which might offer the raw elements for life. These and other solutions have been proposed to explain the Fermi paradox. Any of them are right. Nevertheless, some researchers think they're all impossible and a waste of time. One percentage of aliens would consider the cost of colonization exorbitant. Could it be that they've run out of empirical evidence? Do we stand out enough for someone to create a cosmic zoo just for us? Fermi's puzzle has as many possible solutions as crabgrass, but people are still determining which one is right. There may be many complex societies that we haven't discovered yet. Another possibility is that we're alone, and that's all there is to it. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content.